Here you can see the cow parsley is just beginning to bloom. They have these wonderful white knuckles that their flower that uh, then bloom into this kind of lacy uh, flower. But the reason I came in here was this is an elm leaf. These are elm leaves. They're really soft. They're little kind of like rabbit ears of leaves. So this is a young elm tree that is leafing out. And we also know it's an elm tree because it's right next to, this is a beech tree and it's not leafing out at all yet. But elm trees always leaf out before the beech tree. So this is the elm and this is the beech which is still in its kind of seed sorry leaf bud stage sadly elm trees used to be prolific throughout england and ireland and they got something called the dutch elm disease so in the 1970s they were dying all over the country and we had loads of them here in our woods and fields and they all died and for years we had elm as firewood so they're very rare now to come and we keep getting them coming up as young trees this tree is probably about 10 15 years old but it probably won't last till it might get to the year 30 years of age and then the dutch elm disease will get it and kill it so luckily there's lots of them throughout here, but they only get to a certain age before they're attacked again and die. So they can't grow into big, beautiful trees like they once were a long, long time ago. Here's another section of the wood and the Solomon seal are all coming up. Very beautiful, long, elegant plant. It will rise above, slender and wavy here in this woodland. You can see the wo blue wood anemone as well. Loads of wooden enemy. These are all wooden enemies that I sprinkled about the place a number of years ago. And they're all coming up beautifully. And there's bluebells that will be flowering soon. loads of cow parsley all enjoying this break in the tree canopy where trees fell down in previous storms you can see above us cherry trees in blossom that's a cherry tree there that's a cherry tree there and the humming of bees. The bees are all in all those cherry tree blossoms. You can see all across there, cherries, cherries, all over there, cherries, all in blossom and humming with pollinators and bees.
found this. Look, some of the Solomon seal is blooming already with their little dangly little white blossoms. No, you thought you'd lost us in all that deep foliage. Poor puppers. And here we're up in the orchard. The apple trees are not quite in bloom yet. But here you can see hazel trees are beginning to leaf out. These are hazel leaves. More hazel here. You have loads of hazel along here, always good for their nuts. My grandfather planted them. They were also good for windbreaks and there's a coppice tree. This, when it comes out, this is a hawthorn and it's a magnificent pink one. You can maybe just see there's a bit of blush of pink there. So that'll be a beautiful pink when it comes out. ash trees. The ash trees are just flowering at the moment. No leaves. Their buds are quite tight at the moment. There, that's an ash tree bud. So they're quite tight. They're not coming out yet. But they are flowering. You can see the flowers. These are the ash tree flowers. This is laurel. I'm not a fan of laurels. They're flowering, but the bees don't tend to really pollinate them. There might be pollinators who do, but I don't know who pollinates them. Maybe they do. I've never seen bees on them really. There's a holly. This is a male holly because you can see there's less of the prickly bits. A male, this is what a female holly leaf looks like, but a male holly tree will have a lot of these kind of what look like, uh, they actually look like laurel leaves, but they are less prickly. So that's a male tree. That's a male holly tree. And this tree here, this is another elm tree, but it's more exposed. So it hasn't leafed out yet. And there's a few more ash and elm trees in here. This is another hawthorn. You can see its leaf has that kind of open palm look. And more, more laurel behind. And ash. And dogs squeezing under the fence. She's trying to keep up with her best buddy, Bear. Off in after a rabbit or something. This here is my favorite cherry tree. It doesn't bear fruit. It's just so beautiful, the coloring of it. The color of its leaves and the deep rich of its blossom. 
I haven't a clue what it's called. Don't ask me that. It was planted by my grandfather. But its blossoms are just, and the spring leaves are gorgeous. These will grow out and become green. They lose their leaf color, copper color, as the season goes. And then here is another cherry tree that's a very delicate one as well. So these are two cherry trees that are in the woodland. And here you can see there's daffodils are still coming out and the Solomon seal. The Solomon seal is all coming, blooming in its elegance in amongst these daffodils. And then this monstrous pile is my hedgehog hotel. We were chopping some laurels down to get holly a chance because I prefer the holly because it's more protective of small birds than laurel and has food at a variety of times of year whereas laurel really doesn't have any food at all for any wildlife. Anyway, this is the Hedgehog Hotel. The dogs are always interested because it smells of hedgehogs and there will be pathways in and out. I can't see any at the moment. I haven't looked to be honest. Maybe there's one right there where he's looking but there will be paths that the hedgehogs will make going into this pile and they'll have their babies in there. If I come over here, through all this beautiful Solomon seal, we have so, sometimes there's woodland lilies that start coming up over here. They're lilies, again, probably my grandfather planted and they're usually somewhere around in here, if I can see them. I don't know where they are. Oh, there, I can see one. They're very distinctive sheet leaf shape. There you go. That's one of the woodland lilies that will bloom later on. You can see there it's blossom. And there's, oh, there's more in under there. So this tree fell on top of them sometime during the winter. Something I didn't have a chance to put on top of the Hedgehog Hotel. But there's lots of different um, plant life in here. The yellow here is celandine. This is the celandine here. You can see the celandine, bluebells. This is... Um, uh, ground elder, of course the nettle, cow parsley. Uh, this stuff is, um, people call it sticky willy or robin run the hedge. It's a cleanser. The sheep love it. Here's a bluebell about to flower. So you can hear the puppies because the um, undergrowth is so high, the puppies get worried that they can't find us. They hear my voice and they whine. Listen to the bird song. <laughs> it's called a puppy song. You found me. <laughs> oh, poor puppers. Oh, were you lost? Were you lost? Yes. So much for bird song. It turned into puppy song. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'll try for bird song somewhere else. Now to compare the undergrowth, there it's undergrowth and here's holly trees coming up and under the holly trees there's bluebells and the open canopy of the deciduous trees. You can see there is a mixture, there's a few evergreens but mostly it's deciduous ash and beech and uh, there's a few chestnuts and cherry trees. Then you come here. This is what laurel does. Laurel and when it's ivy, you can see I've been cutting the ivy out. This is a not very biodiverse woodland floor. It won't feed pollinators. It won't do a lot of things. 
so this is why I'm slowly chopping the laurel out. This is young laurel regrowing that the sheep after they'd grazed. But this is, and these are all huge thickets of laurel. But a laurel is not very inducive for food or for birds for nests. It's a very open canopy of big leaves. Well, it's not an open canopy, it's big leaves. So not very good for nesting or protecting for cor from corvids, which prey on small birds. Whereas if you come here to the holly, holly feeds pollinators with the flowers. You can see the holly flowers are about to happen. And then that'll be berries in the winter. As well as there's more tightly uh, packed areas where a bird can nest when the tree gets bigger. As well as the sharp edges a corvid doesn't want to go deep into a holly tree to find a bird's nest because of all the prickles of holly trees. So I'm a big, big advocate of um, holly trees in woodland because laurels, you know, their, their leaves are smooth. A corvid doesn't mind brushing up against them. And these flowers, like I said, I still haven't seen anything pollinating them, but they're obviously flowers. And they don't really fruit. Nobody really, I've found, eats them. There's another cherry tree you can see up there. Beautiful cherry tree blooming. And so that's, that's an ash tree. That's a beech tree. Two different trees, different canopies. This is what a woodland needs to be. It needs to be diverse. So it can have loads of life in it. Insect and bird and plant life. That's what we want in a woodland. Oven mitts joined us on our woodland wander. Haven't you, kitty? This is laurel that uh, we were chopping down a few months ago clearing this kind of area of uh, laurel. And this is a big ash tree here. The tree there that you can see fell during one of the storms was a beautiful lime tree. Another tree we have in the woods here. It's very sad when that went down. Anyway, you can see the dead understory of where all this laurel was. This laurel here is actually one that fell down. Its base is over there and it's fallen down across here. And this is a holly tree I was trying to salvage right here. This is a female holly tree. You can see how prickly it is. But this is the holly tree up here. And it had loads of light now that the laurels are down, but this laurel has fallen down against it. So I'll have to uh, chop that up at some stage getting rid of some branches, loads of branches, and lots of firewood, because laurel's great for firewood, uh, but not good for biodiversity. So that bit of laurel will be diced up and used as firewood for next winter. And so we're still followed by puppies. Yes. They prefer this area of the woods because they can see where they're going because there's no understory, because there's no uh, foliage of growth of plant life underneath laurel. It's kind of a dead zone in a wood, in these woods. Isn't that right, kitty? More, more laurel here. Here's more laurel. We didn't quite cut all the way back but quite, cut quite a bit back so that this holly here could get more light. So it gets more light here. Just trying to allow holly trees the space from what used to be loads of laurel. That's a huge beech tree. You can see all the way up there. So that's a beech tree. That's an ash tree. 
Again, two different species side by side. And all these are baby laurels and the sheep will be in the woods next winter and we'll eat the baby laurels. You can see here they've pruned back. Again, all this work has done, been being done over the years, step by step. You can see this was all laurel. And then if you come over here, you can see there's green growth underneath the woodland. Okay, a lot of it is ground elder. But look, there's a baby horse chestnut. So that'll grow up big and tall. We'll leave that and I'll probably throw some protection around it of, so that the sheep don't eat it come the autumn. Here's more holly. More holly. And look at all the bluebells. All the lovely with the uh, cow parsley coming up. And here are Jack in the pulpits which are about to bloom. These are their flowers. Some people call them lords and ladies. And this is at the base of a beech tree. Here's a pile of firewood I've not brought in yet. I'll wait until this autumn to bring it in because I don't want to disturb the plant life. And look at all the bluebells. Look at them all. And you can see there's a growth of holly right there. Something I'm encouraging. And here's elder. This will be elderflower will come up as well. See holly, elder, bluebells, beech trees, lime trees, oak trees. Oh, and that's a plains tree over there. That's a plains tree. <laughs>